A user may be unable to log in to a device functioning as a Telnet server. This problem is typically caused by a network or device configuration error. To address this problem, you need to locate the specific cause. The following shows the troubleshooting methods corresponding to these different causes. First of all, run the ping command on the client to check the network connection. If the network connection is normal, check for other causes. If the ping operation fails, the Telnet connection cannot be established. In this case, see case study, the ping operation fails in troubleshooting guide for troubleshooting. If there is no network error preventing you from logging in, log into the device through the console port and check whether there is an error in the device configuration. For details about how to log in through the console port, see the video, How do I log into a NetEngine series router through the console port? To check whether the Telnet service is enabled, run the display Telnet server command. If disable is displayed for the highlighted parameter, the Telnet service is disabled. In this case, run the Telnet Server Enable or Telnet IPv6 Server Enable command to enable the IPv4 or IPv6 Telnet service. If Enable is displayed for the highlighted parameter, the Telnet service is enabled. If you still cannot log in, check for other causes. The third step is to check whether the access protocol configured in the VTY user interface view is correct. The protocol inbound command is used to configure an access protocol supported by a VTY user interface. In this example, protocol inbound SSH is configured, indicating that only SSH is supported. As such, it is not possible to log in to the device through Telnet. To address this issue, change the configuration to protocol inbound all, so that both SSH and Telnet can be used for login. The fourth step is to check the login authentication mode in the VTY user interface view. In this example, no login authentication mode is configured, preventing login. The device supports both AAA and password authentication. AAA authentication is strongly recommended because it offers higher security than password authentication. In password authentication mode, you can run the set authentication password command to set or change the login password. In AAA authentication mode, you need to create a local AAA user and set a login password for it. If the authentication mode is changed from password authentication to AAA authentication, the device prompts you to enter the old password to complete the change. The fifth step is to check the maximum number of VTY users supported and the number of current login users. In this example, the number of login users does not reach the upper limit. If the upper limit is reached, all the VTY channels are occupied, preventing the device from accepting any new user connection. In this case, you can increase the maximum number of VTY users supported and configure the authentication mode and password for the newly added users. VTY channels are limited and determine how many VTY users can log in to the device. The maximum number of VTY users supported can be set to an integer ranging from 0 to 21. If the number of login users already reaches 21, the device does not accept new user connections. To allow a new user to log in, the administrator can disconnect an idle user from the device. The last step is to check whether an ACL is configured in the VTY user interface view. If an ACL is configured, check whether the specified Telnet client address is denied based on an ACL rule in the ACL view. If it is, change the deny action to permit. Note, if the deny action is not configured for the specified client address but the permit action is configured for another address, for example, 10.2.2.2, the deny action takes effect by default for the device. This will prevent login. To address this issue, configure the permit action for the specified client address. If these troubleshooting steps fail to solve the problem, collect the results of these steps as well as the configuration, log, and alarm files of the device, and contact Huawei technical support personnel. Thank you for watching.